People may feel like this channel is all about politics, but for me the focus is really on the media. Hopefully this video can explain why I feel that way. So in the past couple of days we've had an outgoing Liberal Senator claim that the PM is a bully and provide further backstory on the mysteries surrounding Morrison's entrance into federal politics, as well as alluding to a few of the unsavoury machinations of the Liberal Party. In case you missed it, here are a couple of the spicier moments. His actions conflict with his portrayal as a man of faith. I mean. There is a putrid stench of corruption emanating from the New South Wales division of the Liberal Party. It is his way or the highway, an autocrat, a bully who has no moral compass. In my public life, I have met ruthless people. Morrison tops the list, followed closely by Hawke. Morrison is not fit to be Prime Minister, and Hawke certainly is not fit to be a minister. The Mean Girls saga received blanket coverage for weeks, despite the apparent lack of any formal complaint and the rejection of the allegations by those involved. There did not appear to be any detail or substance reported in terms of the allegations. The only specific allegation I could find in any of the coverage was a reference to the Senator being stood down from the Tactics Committee. And based on at least one report, it doesn't sound like that should have come as a surprise. There's obviously more to the story than the front page headlines, but few publications bothered to dig that deep. Now, consider the allegations levelled at Scott Morrison on Tuesday night. They were explosive and something you can only imagine might capture the attention of a federal ICAC. Oh wait, we don't have one of those, do we? And if the coalition get in again, there doesn't seem to be much appetite for setting one up either. Zero dollars doesn't go a long way after all. Anyway, back to my point. Given the sheer volume of coverage the Mean Girls saga received, it's only reasonable to expect that the far juicier allegations levelled at Morrison and the Coalition would dominate the front pages, right? OK, the day after I'm willing to cut the papers some slack, print deadlines and all that, but it will definitely lead on Thursday, right? Hmm, nothing here. OK, let's check the Sydney Morning Herald website. Uh... Ah, oh, they've rolled out John Howard to defend the PM. That's nice. Um, okay. Uh, ah, here we go. Wow. Much prominence. Harold Sun love a big headline. I'm, I'm sure it'll be on their homepage. Wow. This is unexpected. Right up the top. Let's have a look. Ah... Uh, yeah, but we can't prove it right. <sighs> Better go easy on the PM then. Anything else? Okay, uh... Um... No, it's gonna... Um... Yeah, okay, maybe they just missed it. So, to summarise, on the one hand we have a story lacking substance and specifics. It receives weeks of coverage. On the other hand, we have a story jam-packed with specific allegations, just waiting for a thorough investigation that, if proven, could and should, in my opinion, end political careers. The difference in the way these two stories have been covered tells you everything you need to know about the media landscape in Australia. Thanks for watching. Yeah.